say something spicy. Like what? Mm. Jalapeno. Mm. Yeah, spicy. Yeah. What's good, y'all? Welcome to episode four of Bipolar Express. I've been thinking about how I want to go forward with this. Uh, not like I really had that clear of a direction before. I think I've done one interview um, with a friend. And then the first episode I did was just like my manic episode experience. Um, but yeah, going forward, I think I want to do like podcast slash vlog style. We'll see how consistent I am with taking um, yeah some like video clips throughout the week. Um, I'm thinking of the focus being like... I'll do, like, my Reminder Tuesdays, and then throughout that week, I'll, like, see how I actually go about with that focus of the Reminder Tuesday topic. So then the episode of Bipolar Express that releases on, like, Sunday or Monday can be like, okay, this is how my week went with focusing on that topic. Um, but for this episode, I'm thinking it would be good for me to just kind of, like, give background as to why I even make music, how that all came about. Um, but yeah, so the first episode of Bipolar Express, as I mentioned, was me, um, sharing my manic episode experience, which is how I even found out that I was bipolar, how I got that diagnosis. Um, but yeah, so, but the Bipolar Express, the series going forward, I wanted to be focused on like my musical journey. So story time, how that came about is before I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, um, I was diagnosed in 2019. And about like a year and a half before that, I took a leave of absence um, from college. I was going to Quinnipiac University at the time. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been dealing with depression since like the start of junior year of high school, or maybe like halfway through sophomore year of high school. So I just remember being like super depressed. Like, yeah, I had like circumstantial things going on in my life, but even when like things were good, like I just remember feeling like such deep like despair and at the time I just thought like oh I don't like I'm just sad like I the thought of mental illness never even crossed my mind um but yeah I want to give that context to say that I would have ups and downs you know the bipolar of sometimes being super down sometimes being like super functional being able to get good grades play soccer do regular teenage things um so I ended up deciding to go to Quinnipiac my first semester um, May the Dean's List, doing well. And that comes off from my senior year of high school, my second semester of senior year, getting hella D's and F's, um, even though the first semester I got A's and B's. Um, just because after, like, the soccer season senior year, my mental health just, like, dipped. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so fast forward, I'm going to Quinnipiac. I'm doing physical therapy as my major. Um, and so go from having a very good first semester freshman year, second semester was, eh, it was all right. Um, but then sophomore year, my grades started to drop a lot. Um, like, so again, I had a 3.8 GPA or whatever in my first semester freshman year. By the start of sophomore year, like the f end of the first semester sophomore year, um, I think I had a, it was either one point something or just a zero point something. I, it dipped a lot, a lot of F's and D's. Um, so at this point, and I had like a partial, um, what do you call it? Academic scholarship. Um, so I had lost my academic scholarship cause I didn't keep the minimum GPA average. I lost my, um, like grants I had like certain financial aid that had a GPA requirement. Um, so I was like, all right, let me take a leave of absence from school, figure out what's going on. I remember before I took that leave of absence, probably for a solid, a solid semester I had met with the head of the, like, tutoring department at Quinnipiac, and then he was like, hey, Gabar, like, what's going on? Like, you were doing so well. Why have your grades dropped so drastically? I remember telling him, like, I feel like something's just going on with me mentally. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I have no motivation. I would skip mad classes, just be, um, like, in my bed, couldn't get up. My roommate was very worried about me, like, yo, G, what's going on? Why are you, like, skipping class? I'm like, I'm just depressed. I have no motivation to do nothing. I'm very sad. Um... So yeah, I took, I ended up taking a leave of absence and I remember there's like a lot of things that happened throughout, but I remember there was one time that I was just like, all right, God, um, I am going to go down to the base of my house. I'm going to pray 
I'm going to bring my Bible and I'm not leaving this basement <laughs> until you give me some type of direction for my life. Um, so yeah, more context. I grew up super Christian, apostolic, Pentecostal, um, going to church like from kindergarten consistently Monday or Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, like Bible study, prayer nights, revival nights, all that fun. Um, so yeah, my faith is very much shaped my identity, shapes my worldview. And not just because like, I was raised in that, but just like my experiences and my bipolar pre-diagnosis and after diagnosis has been a big testament just of how God has like kept me and helped me throughout life. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, so again, so during that leave of absence, I remember going down to my basement, just be like, God, like, you know, it's, it's, these the promises he gives us in scripture um, like, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So I'm like, all right, God, I need some of that directing, you know? My path is all messed up. I need to direct my path right now. Um, so I remember going downstairs, praying, reading the Bible, and then, it's kind of funny to me now, but, like, the what came to mind, like, very strong was Justin Bieber's, I don't know if the album's called Purpose, but whatever album has Purpose as one of the songs. Um, so I just remember just getting such a strong sense, like, God said, like, hey, you're here for a reason, you're not on Earth by accident, because, um, so yeah, I remember just, like, listening to that, just, to, maybe not the whole album, but definitely the song Purpose, um, and that was definitely starting to encourage me, I'm like, alright, God, so now I'm feeling reassured that I have a purpose for my life, but, like, what is it, you know, like, it's not that helpful just to know I have a purpose, I kind of need to know what it is, so that will, like, give me reason to keep going. Um... And I also made the decision I was going to go down to the basement. Um, oh, no, I should put it this way. So while I was in the basement, I got the idea to, like, not to, like, to fast and pray for the next three days. So I did that. And then at the end of the third day, um, I remember I was just pacing back and forth in my living room, lis listening to All Stars, funny enough, by Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Um, and then just very strongly... I heard from God, I know that could sound weird to, yeah, to, to depending on what your background is with spirituality and just thoughts on that. Um, but I just had a very strong impression, like in my mind, not like an audible Morgan Freeman voice, but in my head, I just heard very strongly music, like not just like my own thought. It sounded like an external thought in my head, if that makes sense. So I just heard very strongly music. I'm like, okay, but so like, is that my purpose? Um, <clears throat> as I remember going to church, let me drink some water, I'm dying. <clears throat> I don't remember how far after it was that that happened, but I want to say maybe like a few weeks. I went to church. I wanted to, um, from my experience, it would be called an altar call. But yeah, like prayer at the end of the sermon, that prayer minister is lined up against the side of the wall. I went to one of the prayer ministers asking for prayer. And he's like, yeah, how can I pray for you? I'm like, yeah, I've been asking God what, like, I need to be doing <laughs> with my life. And after I had just been praying and fasting, I got a strong sense that um, he wants me to make music. And he just was like, wow, this is, I've never felt this way when I've been praying for someone before. Um, he's like, yeah, I, I'm getting confirmation that, that, that you're right. God wants you to make music. Um, fast forward summer 2020. So this is like a year plus after all of that. Um, I was going up to a prayer meeting um, with one of my um, friends slash like mentor at church. We were going up to a prayer meeting in Hartford and there was a, it was like a prayer meeting for planning on like a conference for like revival in like the New England region, if I recall correctly. So there was a pastor from New Hampshire there who I had never met before. Um, so me and my, um, friend from church, we walk in, the pastor from New Hampshire eventually, like, sees us, um, he comes over to us, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember if this was before or after the whole, like, planning meeting, <coughs> but I do recall he came up to us, and then he asked, and, oh, sorry, I'm forgetting the part, in the car ride up to there, I remember talking to my friend from church, I'm gonna say Joel, I keep saying friend, but Joel from church, so I was talking to Joel, and I was just like, yeah, like, I feel like God's been telling me to make music, but I don't really know where to start. Like, I don't play no instruments. I'm a very average singer. 
<laughs> like, uh, yeah, I don't like I've written raps for fun in the past, but like, yeah, so like you make music where, what does that mean? Where do I start? What do I do? So yeah, we get to the prayer meeting. The pastor from New Hampshire comes up to us and he's like, Hey, is either one of you guys a musician? So Joel just starts laughing. Cause that's what we had been talking about on the car ride up there. And then I just like sheepishly like smiled. And I told him like, I'm not one, but I feel like God's calling me to be one. And then, so the pastor's like, yeah, yep. He's like, that spirit, that that's all over you. The anointing's all over you to make music. And then he just put his hand on my chest and um, started praying for me. But first he's like, do you know who Andre Crouch is? I'm like, yeah. So Andre Crouch is like a legendary like gospel musician, passed away. I don't know, it was like early 2000s, mid 2000s, but he's passed away. Rest in peace. Um, but yeah, I listened to a lot of his music growing up. Um, I don't know if I say a lot, but definitely the Mighty Wind album. That's a classic. I've listened to that multiple times. Um, so I, I was familiar with him. And so he asked me, he's like, yeah, do you know who he is? Do you know how we got to start? I'm like, no. He was like, his dad was a uh, either preacher or pastor, and they needed a musician to play music at their church services. So Andre just got on the keyboard and then, like his dad prayed for him to get the gift of music. And yeah, Andre just started picking up things really quickly as he um yeah just like stepped out on faith or i guess his dad stepped on faith but yeah he developed the ability to play music very well again legendary gospel artist so he's like yeah i just pray that that you just start where you are and god will just keep guiding you and you will develop the musical abilities that you need to um live out this calling that he's put on your life um and yeah so that had me shook because i'm like wow like this is the most like yeah, the most significant time I've, like, heard from God. Because, like, you know, so I had the first confirmation of the minister at church. I was like, yeah, I get that sense to make music. And then this is, like, the biggest confirmation. Because um, the homeboy didn't know nothing about the music, but the fast and the prayer, and he just came up to me. He's like, yeah, that anointing for music's all over you. Um, and there was another incident similar to that at an event called Carry the Love when I was, like, on a leave of absence from Quinnipiac, but was still going to some of, the, like, the Christian fellowship meetings. So I had a similar experience with a minister there. Um, so, yeah, that's the story of how I've even, like, got started on this music journey. And from then, I've done a lot of YouTube university hours of learning how to um, record myself and mix and edit. And I so I use Adobe Audition um, to, to record... And now I'm just getting sidetracked because I usually use my headphones when I'm recording, but as I'm looking at the computer, I'm a little nervous. So I've been doing all this talking and has it, but I see it. So we'll, we're going to listen back and we'll see. But, um, yeah, so that's where we at. Fast forward 2024, just put out my first song of the year, like two weeks ago, I think now. Um, yeah. So as we continue these bipolar express episodes, um, yeah, I hope y'all, can enjoy the journey and just see i want my life to be a testament for other people to know that god loves them so much he has a purpose for their life and if we just ask god like if you feel lost like i don't know what my purpose is because other people you know it seems like they just have a down pat i'm gonna go to nursing school i'm gonna be an engineer lawyer doctor pa communications major working advertising like so for me i was like eh, physical therapy is kind of like a plan b i really want to do soccer but i have backgrounds yada 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 so all that to say i want my life to be a testament that god loves you he cares about you if you ask him for guidance he will give it to you the bible says if you ask for wisdom he'll give it to you liberally um so as you watch these episodes i hope it's an encouragement for you um yeah god has plans for your life for all of our lives that's greater than we can even imagine um so yeah we'll see how it goes hope i can get some like guests still talk about like the bipolar aspect and oh so when i put that out there see so, yeah, i'll talk about my personal experience with bipolar disorder but also like let's be real, we're all a little bit bipolar like we all deal with the highs and lows of life maybe not the extreme of like having a manic episode and being hospitalized and all that fun stuff um, but yeah, so I hope I can also just give encouragement on, like, the mental health side. Talk about, I mean, we'll see. Maybe I'll get into, like, I'm also asking God for wisdom on how much I should share. Like, I'm not trying to overshare. Like, I love y'all, but I don't know y'all like that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, I think at the end of this episode, I'm going to put some, like, behind-the-scenes footage of when I was recording some of the promo clips for the song I just put out, The Calm Before the Storm um 
But yeah, I think that's all I want to say for this episode. Um, yeah, if anything else comes to mind, I'll, <laughs> I could do another take and add it onto this. But um, yeah, like I said, at the end of my Reminder Tuesday um, episodes or clips that I put on my Instagram and TikTok. Uh, I love you. God loves you. I'll see you next episode. Yeah.